For me, there has always been a lingering feeling sitting somewhere in the corner hinting that what if the over-reliance of AI tools like ChatGPT will heavily impact our intelligence and become the brain rot 2.0. Especially with how kids in school nowadays are just using ChatGPT to do their homework instead of actually learning, along with a viral company enabling people to cheat on interviews and basically cheat on everything. I think there is a reasonable expectation of brain damage to an extent, right? So just a few weeks ago, researchers over at MIT dropped a pretty cool research paper showing that our learning effectiveness decreases when you overly rely on AI chatbots. While some may say that having an AI writes your homework of course doesn't help your learning, but beside this bombshell implications which has more levels to it, they took a closer look at the brain signals using electroencephalogram to get a bit more understanding about how our brains work when we are on AI tools. But before we dive into it, with me always talking about the advanced and theoretical aspect of AI, sometimes we also need some grounded introduction into how to apply AI, especially AI agents which is the most popular use case in 2025. That's why I like to share with you this free resource from HubSpot called Master AI Agents in 2025, The Strategic Advantage. In this resource, you will get two comprehensive playbooks, one that is 42 pages long, which shows you exactly where AI agents deliver the biggest return on investment, and another that's a step-by-step -step checklist that walks you through the AI agent rollouts. My favorite section is the common pitfalls and how to avoid them in the 42-page playbook, as this is often overlooked when building custom AI agents. Especially under an organizational setting, AI agents may bear too many expectations or contain challenges that can often be overlooked, so having these precautions can significantly improve your chance of success. And of course, it's a crazy powerful tool when you get it working. In marketing, AI agents now shoulder the repetitive work of content repurposing, social scheduling, and campaign analytics so your creatives can stay focused on big ideas. In sales, they can handle prospect research, meeting prep, and personalized follow-ups, buying precious time back for relationship building. And across operations, agents quietly file docs, route requests, and service real-time analytics so your org runs like a clockwork. The best part is, you can download these resources completely for free right now. So if you're ready to dive into AI agents, check it out using the link down in the description, and thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the juiciest takeaway of this paper is that 83.3% of the LLM users in this study couldn't quote the exact sentence they wrote 3 minutes earlier, which is a bit crazy, but kind of expected to an extent because the user didn't really write the sentences, it's the AI that wrote them. So what the experiment did is that the research researchers would test the participants to write SAT style argumentative essays and they were given ChatGPT to write it. These participants are undergrad students from a few different universities and I think they should be pretty smart too from the look of these school names. However, 15 out of 18 people that are using ChatGPT to do the SAT questions cannot recall anything word for word from their essay even though they are still involved in the higher level like overseeing the LM to generate structure and without the final essay necessarily being a direct copy taken straight from the AI. While you might think, oh, recalling anything word for word might just be a bit difficult, but it turns out that only 2 out of 18 people that wrote their own essay themselves cannot recall what they submitted, which is an insane difference. They also had another test group where they let them use Google search, and most of them were able to recall what they wrote too. So this initial result gave us a first peek into the phenomenon which the researchers called cognitive debt, similar to the idea of technical debt, which is the long-term cost of making quick but messy tech choices that make future changes harder. Cognitive debt is kind of like when you let a tool to do the hard thinking for you, only to handicap your performance when the tool is gone. The idea was originated from the cognitive load theory developed by John Sweller, which says that our working memory has strict limits. Think of it as a mental whiteboard that can hold only a handful of ideas at once when we are solving questions, and learning is the strongest when the whiteboard is full enough which enables us to build new mental connections. So when an AI supplies perfectly constructed sentences, it takes away that productive struggle which is the key to help our learning. And the process that makes knowledge durable never fully crystallize. Without this crystallization, the use of LLMs would heavily impair the participants' ability to reproduce or recollect what was really written. And the science of this impairment was able to be quantified with their measurement of the brain waves using the electroencephalogram. Across the study's 54 participants, which is a pretty small sample size, the traffic of brain wave changed the moment ChatGPT steps in. Compared with brain only writers, the AI group showed a 47% drop in alpha band connections, most of which involves frontal parietal pathways. These alpha band connections are where two brain regions, electrical rhythms in the 8 to 12 hertz range oscillate together, signaling a coordinated information flow which is often between the planning and the monitoring part of the brain. And this connection is thinned out in the AI users, meaning the brain stopped building a big picture together and instead ran on a shorter local loop. On top of that, during typical strong memory formation, the peaks of the slow theta brainwave synchronize across cortical hubs to create durable memories, but in AI users' case, this theta connectivity 
activity is noticeably reduced by more than 50%. So the memory signaling is basically weakened, which means there are fewer chances where the new information is saved into long-term memory. This means both the working memory and the long-term memory of the brain would be less activated. Aside from that, the essays that the AI users wrote are stylistically less diverse than the ones written with actual brain power. So would this have a lasting consequence? After the researchers ran the writing sessions across the groups, they then did a switchback test. They took away ChatGPT from the students who have been using it in the initial 20 minute session and handed ChatGPT to the brain only pen and paper group that didn't get to use ChatGPT in the initial 20 minute session. For the group that got their ChatGPT taken away, their frontal parietal alpha wave efficiency got even worse once the AI assistance was taken away. I thought it would at least bounce back, but it fell further instead, dropping another 5.5% below their own previous baseline. This includes the incapability to recall and the decreased quality of the writing. But keep in mind, this conclusion is drawn from an even smaller sample size from the initial 18 down to 9 people in this test group. However, this is still with a one week gap, so being incapable of quickly spinning up those brain parts that built a big picture in 20 minutes even after one week break on the same type of questions is definitely concerning. This indicates some kind of short term brain lag and might even suggest some potentially lasting consequences in the long run. On the other hand, the researchers observed something completely opposite to the group that was given access to ChatGPT later on. The moment they gained access to ChatGPT, their frontal parietal alpha connectivity rose by roughly 51% above their own baseline, the strongest performance they had shown in any session. Their memory still kept on the same level as well. Eight of nine students could quote at least one full sentence from the essay they had just produced, essentially restoring the 89% recall rate seen in the original brain-only baseline. Essay quality also followed the same upward curve, climbing to the highest mean score recorded in the entire study. So the implications from this rather small size study still paints a clear picture about how AI impacts our cognitive functions. If you start with brain only practicing to lay down the neural connections needed for big picture planning and durable memory, then when ChatGPT is added, it functions as an amplifier for your cognitive abilities rather than a substitute. But in contrast, if you start with AI, the bridges of the neurons will never be built, and once the tool is removed, the brain stays sluggish and performs poorly even after one week wash out in a fresh essay topic. That short term lag hits a potentially big concern at the devastating consequence of cognitive debt that may deepen if the pattern stretches over months. So early AI reliance may result in shallow encoding, but withholding AI tools during early stages would support memory formation and boost your cognitive abilities even further when AI tools are provided later on. And of course, there are caveats I have to point out in this research. First is that with the original experiment before the switch over is already a really small size study, which is 18 people in each group, but after the switch over, the people are again cut down in half. So whether this phenomenon will replicate or not on a larger scale is still a question that is left on the table. On top of that, all the efficiency measurements were evaluated on essay writing only. Coding, design, memorization, or problem solving might stress different parts of the brain circuits, which may give completely different results. With that being said, the essay writing are still SAT styled argumentative essays, so critical thinking is required. But even with these caveats, the pattern that is present is already hard to ignore. It just kind of shows that AI tools are basically a double-edged sword. In the perspective of efficiency, this makes a lot of sense as you are to an extent offloading complex thinking processes to an artificial intelligence. But in the perspective of education, it is pretty damn bad where the goal is to improve cognitive abilities through learning and using AI tools wrongly would basically screw up your brain. So it is important to remember that ChatGPT isn't necessarily making people dumber, which is an easy but mistaken conclusion to draw from this paper. Instead, it is the way you apply it that will have either positive or negative of consequences on you. This research even explicitly warned journalists not to mislead people with this research because the cause and effect is much more complicated. But this does provide a very good early framework for understanding the mental effort required for learning and problem solving in relation to the usage of AI chatbots. And it's kind of scary where there might be a potential lasting consequences on education if the traditional systems are not reformed properly. Because kids nowadays are just using ChatGPT to do their homework. Then what's the point of homework? And as always, if you like this type of AI research review, you should definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the most cutting edge AI research weekly. On it, you'll be up to date on the cool new AI research ideas that researchers around the world publish. So if that's your cup of tea, go check it out now. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, 
Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.